So last time around, we explained how a basic point ignition system works. And we did it with our, our bench test demonstration here. Kathy will put a link to it over here so you can see that if you haven't seen it. And this time around, we're going to talk about the care and feeding of one of these things. Um, next installment, which we'll probably do in a week or two, is going to be about the high performance variations. Dual point distributors, capacitive discharge ignitions, and how to set these things for optimum performance. But for right now, we're just going to do the basic maintenance, care and feeding of these things. Um, and I got to say up front, we're going to have to talk in gross generalities here because dealing with points, you're talking about systems that go back to you know the, the 1900s, the early 1900s. You're talking about uh, all different types of motorcycle, marine, uh, all different variations of automotive. Um, but they all have a lot of things in common. They all have the, as the, the essentials are all in common. So that's what we're going to focus on, the essentials. Um, so, first things first. Uh, if you're going to mess around with points, you're going to need some tools. You're going to need some basics, okay? Uh, the first is a feeler gauge to set the points. Now, there are some point sets, and we're going to get to them in a few minutes, that you don't set with a feeler gauge. You set them with a dwell meter, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes too. But by and large, for the most part, almost all ignition systems, all point ignition systems you're going to come across are going to be gapped with a feeler gauge. Uh, a lot of you guys with the last video chimed in with the whole you know, matchbook cover thing. Oh, you set them with a matchbook cover. That was a great way to get yourself unstuck if you're driving down the road and you know, the rubble block finally goes away and it closes up the points. That was a great way to reset them to get you to where you had to go to you know, actually set them correctly. Um, the thing is these days we'd even find a matchbook cover, right? So ballpark, to get your car up and running if you do have a failure on the side of the road. Uh, approximately 20 thousandths of an inch is what maybe the, the width of a business card a little bit thicker than a business card is where you want to set them um, but yeah forget about all of that matchbook cover side of the road stuff get yourself a feeler gauge all right. um, you're gonna need a points file because um, when you go to maintain these things okay you install the points they're nice and clean but after let's say eight or ten thousand miles you want to clean and regap them so you're gonna use a points file and a points file is simply used like this, you just here's here's a points. You know, pretend it's in a distributor like that, and you just take the points file and just run it back and forth. And what that does is that cleans up the surfaces and makes sure it makes sure you have a nice flat surface between the contacts. Okay, that's the point file. Um, you're going to need uh, well, you have to grease these things, and you can use just like a wheel bearing grease. Put it just the slightest swipe of it on the cam lobes, uh, you know, in, in the distributor. Um, but, I mean, if you're going to go go all the way, right, embrace the uh, the points lifestyle and get yourself some actual points lube. Look at the font on that. That's like right from the 70s, right? Okay. So, um, and then the last thing you're going to need um, is one of these, a dwell meter. So this is this is a, a, a multi-meter. This is tack, dwell, and voltmeter. Um, this was, okay, so it, like 40 years ago, this was the equivalent of whipping out your laptop and putting a tune on your car. So you're going to want to get one of these things. Now if you're dealing with, we were just talking about that, if, we, if you're dealing with, let's say, a GM style uh, distributor from the mid-1960s to the early 1970s, they used what they called a uniset style of points. And this dual point distributor uses a set of these points. So on that GM style, the distributor cap has a window in it. You slide the window up. Obviously this doesn't have that. This has this little hole in the side. So you slide the window up and then you insert your Allen wrench into the points and you increase or decrease the gap reading the dwell just by turning it back and forth. You set these points with the engine running. There's also a way to set conventional points with a dwell meter you can't do it with the engine running you have to have somebody crank the engine as you get in there with two screwdrivers and manipulate the points back and forth okay screwdrivers that's another thing we want to talk about um, you're going to want to get a magnet magnet a magnetic screwdriver or magnetized one because dealing with these screws once you take them out especially the condenser screw they're usually very small Getting them back in is a little bit of, you know, it's a little tricky. 
a magnetic screwdriver will hold the screw in place while you manipulate it. Now, if you can pull the distributor out of your car to service it on the bench, all the better. Now, if you're dealing with, let's say, a tang drive distributor like you'd find on bigger small block Chryslers or, uh, or Hemis, um, it's, it's, it's a very simple thing. All you do is take note of which direction the rotor is pointing, okay? And then just before you take the distributor out, scribe a mark at the base of the distributor. The car responds with the block. Okay, so now your timing is going to be okay when you put the distributor back in. Make a make a, a, a notation which way the rotor is pointing. So in this case, the rotor would be pointing here, opposite the tang on a Chrysler. Now, if you're dealing with a gear-driven distributor, one that has instead of a, instead of a tang like this, has a has a, a gear on it. What you want to do is, as you pull, first you make your mark. Your, your, your basic timing mark on the base, corresponding to the block, and then as you lift the distributor straight out, you're going to see that it's going to turn slightly, just like this, okay? What you want to do is as you pull the distributor straight up, wait until the rotor stops turning. Where it stops turning is where you make your mark on the distributor body, because when you go to drop this back in, it's going to turn, it's going to, it's going to turn as you lower it. So if you make those two marks, you should be able to pull your distributor out, service it on the bench, and then drop it back in so much easier. Of course, if you're dealing with a, like a front drive distributor like a Ford or a Buick or a big block Chrysler, you know, it, it's, it's a step you really don't have to. It's easy enough to just bend over and it's right there. But when you've got a rear mount distributor like a, you know, a Chevy motor or a Pontiac or a, a Chrysler for that matter, you know, a small block Chrysler, pop the thing out. You, you don't need to be bending over there working with these little pieces. Work like a gentleman. Okay, so, uh, oh, and the last thing, condensers. Okay, what is a condenser? You know, that's a damn good question. I've heard 10,000 explanations of what a condenser does. It echoes the signal from, the, from the, uh, the coil. It does all sorts of things. Here's the simple version of what a condenser is. A condenser is a shock absorber for the, for the, for the, for the, the points. All the condenser does Here's a condenser mounted right here, and all it does, it cuts down on the arcing. And what that does is that, that reduces the amount of, amount of etching or material transferred from one contact to the other. Basically, the condenser quadruples the life of the points, and that's why it's there. Here's what's inside of a condenser. We, what's inside a condenser? There's nothing in a condenser, okay? Here's one that we cut apart. Here's the metal housing to the outside. Here's a cardboard insulator. And here's aluminum foil. That's all it is. Row after row, layer after layer of aluminum foil. And there is a, there's also some oil in there. How does it work? I have no idea. But it does. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to have a problem with your points you, in today's world, almost 95% of the time it's going to be related to the condenser. They don't make condensers like they used to. Me. I hoard them. Anytime I put a new set of points on, I also put a new condenser. But I also hoard them. Uh, anytime I go to a junkyard, anytime I find, you know, I'm at a swap meet, I, I see distributors with, you know, condensers in them, I grab the condensers out and keep a stockpile of them. These 20, 30, 40 year old condensers are almost bulletproof and you can count on a, a new condenser you buy today. It, it, it's, it's, it's imminent failure. So, okay gapping these things. So here's what you do. Come up, come closer. Come closer. Get a shot right in here. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to rotate the distributor, okay, until the lobe is against the rubbing block. Okay? And right there, now you're going to watch and see the points open and close. Okay? So what you want to do is you want to get a dead center the 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 lobe and the rubbing block. Then, you loosen this screw, watch out, you loosen this screw right here. Now you don't loosen it completely, just loosen it so that it's snug. You want just a little bit of resistance there. And then, you insert your feeler gauge. Okay, now in this case, this, this thing's already gapped. Your feeler gauge is, is going to be right, 
when you don't see any movement. You know, it's going to just slip through there and you're just going to barely feel it. If you need to open or close it, you take a screwdriver like this and you insert it right here. Every set of points you're going to come across is going to have a little notch. Okay, here's, here's the notch right here. And that notch is specifically so that you can get in there with a screwdriver. Some distributors have two dots, one here and one here instead of having this hole. Uh, and then you would just put the screwdriver between the points of those dots and manipulate it back and forth until you've got the gap where you want it. And that's it. It's, it's that simple. On a Uniset style distributor, like the one we talked about here, the, G, the GM style, what you want to do is you want to hook up your dwell meter. Uh, here's how a dwell meter works. Let's, let's fire up our demonstration again. Now, the tune-up spec for your car is going to give you dwell. The, you're, you're not actually, the, the gap of the point isn't, gap of the points isn't what's important. The dwell number is what's important. The gap is what gives you the dwell number. So if you can set the distributor without using feeler gauge and only using the dwell meter, all the better. General Motors method was unorthodox with those Uniset points, but it's actually superior to the other ones. So dwell meters are all the same. The green lead always goes to the negative on the coil. And the black lead always goes to ground. And if you remember, this is our engine block, this is our ground. So I'm going to fire this thing up again. So here's your drill meter in action, okay? So we've got it set up here at RPM, the top level. Now here, here's RPM, and it gives you an 8-cylinder scale on the top and a 6-cylinder scale on the bottom. This is a 6-cylinder. So right now, it's, it's the same as if the engine was running at 15, 16, 17, 1800 RPM. And we come down once one notch and there's dwell. And here's your dwell scale. Six cylinder dwell scale. We've got 40 degrees of dwell, which is what the slant six calls for. So that's how you work this thing. So I think that covers it, right? I, did, did we leave anything out? Okay. So I think that's it. That's how we gap them. That's how we check them. And those, oh, you want to lubricate these things. Again, we said points lubricant. You can use axle grease. All you do is you take a little tiny bit of this and just give it a lightest rub on the block, on the, on the, uh, the cam. Some points like this one here have a, uh, an oiling pad. So you can put a couple of drops of light oil in there. But don't go crazy, just a couple of drops. And also, if your distributor is open at the top here, like this, drop a couple of drops of light oil in there, and that lubricates the advanced mechanisms. Um, that's it. Next time around, we'll talk about dual point distributors, we'll talk about advances, changing curve, uh, all of those things. So that's it. In the meantime, I'll see you tomorrow.